Deadly Tarantula Girl, welcome. Today I'm doing a video on the beautiful, the fantastic, the amazing Bytus rhinoceros, more commonly known as the Gaboon Viper. This amazing beauty was initially described by Schlegel in 1855 in the category Vipera rhinoceros. Since then, in 1987, it was redescribed by Mertens as Bytus gabonica rhinoceros, and then in 2007, Dobier and Vogel actually changed this from a subspecies to its own species of Bytus rhinoceros. This is a very large, the largest of all African vipers, and one that is known for its thick, heavy body, and it's extraordinarily long fangs. They have the longest fang in the venomous snake world. This also has an extraordinarily potent venom, one that is definitely considered to be fatal. They have a hemotoxic and a neurotoxic venom that will kill you relatively quickly. They are not the most toxic viper, but they have a very long fang and tend to deliver a large amount of venom. This is a terrestrial forest dwelling animal that in the wild is an ambush predator and they love to lay in leaf litter. In captivity, they like to be kept in the high 70s to mid 80s with a relatively high humidity. They are live bearers and their breeding season is the spring and summertime with their gestation being about 7 to 12 months. To induce the breeding season you would want to increase the humidity and their breeding behavior can be somewhat aggressive. They have been seen actually males and females dragging each other around enclosures and it is also very loud and appears quite violent. You might notice that the scales of this viper are quite distinct. So they have the beautiful hourglass and the triangle, the diamond and the rhombus patterns, as well as that black line down the center of their head, which is supposed to emulate a leaf, and the ocular line coming directly from the eye down to the cheek. And then of course the famous nasal scales, which emulate a horn, similar to a rhinoceros viper, although I prefer this one, I find it to be more beautiful. This animal is very dangerous. Um, I find that they're not overly aggressive, although you certainly never want to trust that this animal is not going to bite you because they have an amazing range and can even strike very quickly directly behind them, which is not very common. It's been discovered that the animals that are brought into captivity um, are often thought to die of parasitic infection, but upon further inspection are often actually killed from renal failure due to dehydration. These animals need to be given a good soak regularly to make sure that they do not dehydrate and are not excellent at drinking out of water dishes, especially if you have a, a wild caught animal coming into captivity. And so this is an animal that you want to mist regularly, keep in a relatively humid enclosure. Some people like to keep them on natural substrate and um, some people don't. Obviously you can end up with Infections if you have a natural substrate and a high humidity, so you have to choose what do you think would be the best for your animal in your facility. This is certainly not a beginner species. This is an advanced species to keep. And what I find the most difficult about keeping the species safely is how large and heavy bodied they can get. This is a very massive viper that can grow up to six feet and more 
and weigh up to almost 50 pounds. So they need specialized hooks and tongs, which we use from Midwest Tongs, and I will post the link for this hook that I am using below. When this gaboon grows even larger, I will actually need to use two of these hooks at once. I also have a very large python hook that I might use to assist me as this uh, species grows and they become so heavy bodied that having them over a tiny little hook can actually cause them injury and they're incredibly difficult to move around. They're very dangerous and they have a large range and so you have to move them very, very carefully. I love keeping this species. It's one that I find very rewarding. They are relatively slow to metabolize. They usually only defecate every several weeks to month. Many people agree that you don't want to feed them again until they pass stool. If you feed them more often than that, they can actually die prematurely around three to five years when if they are permitted to grow slowly um, and feed them, some people feed them as few times as monthly or every five weeks or so, they can tend to live 20 years plus in captivity. This is an animal that I absolutely love keeping. I hope to reproduce them soon. I hope you enjoyed this one. Comment below what your favorite species of viper is, and I'll see you guys soon.